Welcome to Ucanic. Today here in Ucanic we have a 2020 Honda Civic. And on this Honda Civic we happen to have our check engine light on. So here we have the, the Ucan uh, 2 code reader hooked up. Yeah, I'm going to power it up and you would start from the home screen and we're going to go into diagnostic. We have the key on in the run position on the vehicle. Uh, not started but on the, in the run position. Uh, we'll select our vehicle. You need to go from all or if you know which group um, your vehicle is from then you'll go through there. So we're going to select a Honda. That's what we have, a 2020 Honda Civic. Uh, we'll use Smart VIN that communicates with the vehicle, comes back with the uh, VIN numbers, and then that way it knows what mantras uh, potentially are on this car. Quick scan will scan the whole vehicle, every module in the vehicle. But we just need to look, we're going to go through the control module and select the engine control module because that's the one we know that we are that is causing the engine light to come on. Okay, so it's gone through. Now we're going to see what the code says. And it's saying that we had a high voltage and a low voltage on our mass airflow sensor. And that's a 125-2 or a 50-1. These both are of the mass airflow sensor. So they're both in the same category. It could be more than one issue causing this. But somewhere we had a voltage issue. Now, sometimes this can be caused by you change the battery because the battery is bad. Um, the engine battery and some other sensors codes can come on after time of driving and a lot of times those will reset But if not, you may need to have a scanner to be able to delete those out But we're gonna go ahead and Find the mass airflow sensor go over the process in which you would do to replace it And then we'll come back and clear out the code So this is our air box right here up at the front of the vehicle and we have the mass airflow sensor right here so um, first, because we had an electric event, not necessarily was it reading a bad meter. If you're reading a bad meter, you would want to be looking more for maybe a, a hole or this not connected. Like say you changed your air filter and you forgot to connect this back up. Or something gone wrong with the air box and it's getting too much airflow to go past it. And so it's throwing the sensor off. Now we had an electric one, so we would check the lines here and make sure that they're from what we can see that there's not any uh, cracks broken or, or fray on it or even that maybe critters got in and, and ate the lines. So if that all looks good well then our next we could potentially just go ahead and replace this sensor or test the sensor but we will just go ahead and replace the sensor because the internal components could easily go bad too. So squeeze the uh, connector here and be able to un clip it then we have to take out the two screws here which are a Phillips head we have the the two screws have been removed and now you'll be able to just move this back and forth and be able to pull it out and this is the sensor unit in there there's that little uh, the little metal tab and that's where it reads the, uh, the readings through it. So you do a good visual that everything looks good in there, good or whether it's burnt out. Um, there is a, if, if you're reading, your meter was reading something like a misread, then you could potentially clean this, but it's just as easy as just go ahead and replace the whole thing. So we have a new sensor ready to put back in, make sure that the old O-ring came out with the old one, and then the, so that we can put the new one in and not have anything else holding it up. You may want to put just a little bit of a um, grease or whatnot on this o-ring or even down around here um, just for easy sliding in that you don't uh, pinch that o-ring because we want to have that good seal. and then be able to reconnect the electrical connector. And now we will go through the process to be able to um, clear the code out of the ECU. And then after you do that, then you're just gonna run the car uh, a couple cycles or more, um, drive it like you normally do. And if the code doesn't come back on, then you know that was potentially the fix. If the code does come back on and say it's the same code, then you're gonna maybe, you're gonna 
have to be looking at some other issues that could potentially be causing that. And that would definitely be looking more into maybe what wiring harness you can't see, you know, maybe something has happened to it. So back around here with the vehicle, we're gonna turn the key on to the on position. And now we will back up here. And then if we're in the read codes, this is where we have the, the mode to erase. So we did replace or checked that code out. So we're going to hit the erase and then it's telling us freeze data will be cleared. Are you sure you want to continue? We hit yes. Now the coding was sent to the car. And so it's telling us to turn the ignition off. And now it says to turn the ignition back on. And it's saying that it, um, so it sent the coding and we're turning it off, turning it on so that it can reread and make sure that that had been fixed at this moment. And so it has passed and there are no system faults at the moment. So now you can just go ahead and start your car. Um, you can even start it a few times and then just essentially go on your um, regular drive and make sure that those, that doesn't come right back on. That is one possible fix for that, that check engine light that came on right there. There could be more that you need to worry about. Thanks for watching, Mechanic, where you can be the mechanic.